The ball go out of play. It's going to be a Lindenwood throw taken by number four, Silver himself. He's going to throw the ball over the halfway line to Romero. And it's going to be a free kick here for Quincy. 31 minutes left on the clock. We're seeing great work from the Lindenwood cheer team. Keep going, girls. They're really Doing trying to wake the Lindenwood job, team up. Aren't they? Really trying to wake them up and really trying to wake like light that fire. Yeah, they're really slow. I, it's it's uh, kind of unfortunate. And we're seeing the crowd just starting to get a bit more uh, relaxed here and sort of join the uh, Lindenwood as we see a breakaway from Alex Newkick. He's got plenty of space. Unfortunately, he was tackled. Uh, there's going to be a free kick there. And Andre Hain is not happy with that at all. Says he got all ball. It was just a tackle. No foul was given, though. And no card was shown by the referee. 30 minutes left on this clock now in the Hunter Stadium. Glad you could join us tonight, LUTV. With Emily Miller and myself, we're having a cracking game. We love watching footy, especially when it's Lindenwood Lions, our boys playing at home. We're seeing a lovely run on the near side there by the Quincy striker, Tim Barrera with the cross. Great control by Alex Dewart and a good clearance there by Newkick. The ball's going to land at the feet of the Quincy defender who's tripped up. Lovely dive from him. He should take up swimming, mate. <laughs> Number 18, Chris Garavali with the dive. Again, I think Lindenwood is kind of waking up more a bit now. You can really see the defense and really blocking. Pace of the game has, yeah, pace of the game has changed, hasn't it, Emily? Yep. Yeah. And blocking those spaces that usually they wouldn't really in the, probably about 10 minutes ago. Uh, we're going to see the ball go out of play here as we drop below 30 minutes. It's going to be a throw in by the Quincy midfielder there. Can't quite see his number in the far corner. The light's blinding me on the far side. Ball's going to go out of play again. Kept in play, actually, by Quincy. Lovely stolen ball by Piers. And as both players go for the dive. There's a nice recovery, though, by Quincy. They're back in their own half. They pass over into the Lindewood end. Lindewood gain control of the ball. I think they got a really good uh, talk by their coach, uh, Mike Carpenter. And now we're seeing Medina with the ball. Passes over to Gonzalez in the center. Nicely through to Bagaric on the near side. He's got one-on-one. -on -one. Here he goes. What skills are he going to bring out here? Any Ronaldo tricks for us tonight? He brings it round the defender, keeps it on side, and it's going to go for a corner kick. Well done, Bagaric. He looked really uh, like a, he was struggling a little bit, though. Quincy really held its own on really trying to block that shot, and he was successful in yeah, that. Yeah, you've got to give Tim Barrera, the uh, defender on the near side. Great defensive work from him. And we've seen the cheerleaders get on their feet now. They're just trying to get raise a bit of noise for the uh, home crowd here. They're still sat down, drinking their uh, beverages and eating their food. It's a great turnout since it was uh, really uh, rainy today. And the, oh, obviously the Emily. seats are really wet. But you know and what? It's great to see such ooh, a great turnout. Lovely free kick taken there by Romero. Unfortunately, the ball went straight into the uh, chest area of... Uh, Drew, the uh, goalkeeper for Quincy. Oh, and a big foul on the play there. Oh, he looks injured. That was an unfortunate strike there from number 14. He's going to be yellow carded. Jordan Roberts there. The Englishman himself, that's not very English-like. Sportsman-like. I'll say. Hopefully um, he's okay. Looks a little shooken up, though. We British men are known for our... Uh, politeness and that was not a casing point and now we're seeing a bit of time out on the field here as one of the athletic trainers comes onto the field gives them a bit of a break though they look like they're really tired 45 minute halves look like they would kill you i find it very respectful the uh, linwood cheerleaders they uh, get down onto the uh, tiptoes of their feet in a line and they respectfully wait for the player to get back on his feet just like that and the uh, cloud uh, the crowd applause the uh, injured player it was Craig Mateer who looked a little bit lightheaded he looks all right now though just keeps the ball 
Great work by the athletic trainers there. They do a fantastic job, we should say. Mm -hmm. Players and athletes of Lindenwood in general, whatever sport you play, they do a fantastic job of keeping you guys in great shape and great health. And also great positive energy from the crowd as well, always keeping the game lively. And now we're going to see some substitutions made here by Lindenwood and by Quincy. Mike Carpenter just gave a little glance over to Carl Hutter on the, near si on the far side. I think he was just sort of going, all right, we're going to bring the rain now. Let's see how you get on, metaphorically speaking, not physically speaking. Uh, let's hope it doesn't rain in the Hunter Stadium. <laughs> 27 minutes left on the clock. That would not be good for the uh, fans watching this game tonight in the stadium. But it definitely cooled down all the players out there, though. Definitely more fun to play in the rain, I think. Oh, I love playing in the rain. And uh, now we're going to see. I think it's going to be Pierre's who's going to take this free kick. Number 17. Yes, it is. He's just standing on the halfway line now, waiting for the uh, last-minute changes to be made. Oh, he's just checking that Craig Mateer's all right, actually. He's seeing if he's allowed to bring him back on. He's not going to bring him on. Carl Hutter's going to send him to the bench for a little bit. Gives him a bit of a rest, and also his teammates. And there's still 27 minutes, 54 seconds left on that big red board over in the east wing of the stadium. And now we're going to see few more substitutions made. We're also seeing on the far side, seeing a lot of activity there from the uh, warm-ups. We can see the uh, yellow and orange jerseys warming up there in the far corner. They're getting ready. They're probably going to come on in the last 15 minutes of the game. Definitely exciting for them getting a chance to play in this um, exciting game for sure. Craig Mateer back on the field now, ready to go for the Lions. Lindenwood have the ball. Great turnover there. And we're going to see New Kick with the strike. He makes it through. A lovely dive by the keeper, but it was not necessary because the ball got deflected off a Quincy midfielder. It's going to go for a corner taken by Silver in the far side. And the dive didn't really do anything. I mean, the keeper didn't really have to worry for that. It was a bit no. of extra effort wasted for no reason. The ball was clearly going wide. But again, sometimes you can't expect what's going to happen. Yeah, though. I suppose the deflection wasn't, you know, we weren't expecting it, so... We're going to see Silver set the ball up in the far corner now. Six players in the box for Lindenwood moving about. The ball goes nice and high, lofted. Down it comes. It's a fantastic oh, goal. Oh, my God. Oh, what that was a great. Goal. That was a bullet of a header. That was by Alex Dewey. Jumps up for the, for the celebration on the far side. What a goal that was. Emily. Oh, Loving great. It. Yeah. Definitely saw that really oh. small space and it just went in. It was great. Oh. That was what we Brits like to call a gobby of a goal. That was absolutely fantastic. Great play by the Lions. Oh, I've got to give the assist to Silver there. That was a cracking cross mm -hmm. in from him from the far corner on the far side. We're going to see a Quincy set up in the centre here. 3-1 to your Lindenwood Lions at home in the Hunter Stadium this September 17th, Tuesday night evening. Glad you could join us here at LUTV. Me and Emily are having a... Walloping great time enjoying this uh, Lindenwood game, even though it's not for conference. It's uh, just in a bit of fun and sportsmanlike. And we see Quincy on the near side now. Kept the ball in play. Makes it round the Lindenwood defender. Sends the ball in, and it's crackingly cleared by Craig McTeer. That was number three, Ethan Vendertol, who made the cross into the box. Throw in now for Quincy. Again, like Linda Wind found that spark um, to really pick it up the pace now for sure. Quincy have got a lot of work to do now if they want to bring back the game for a draw, let alone a win. Oh, we're seeing a big foul now by Ethan Vandertal. He's going to get given the free kick there. Uh, it was uh, Medina who's going to get given the free kick. He uh, was pushed to the ground by Vandertal. Probably the pressure starting to build up, you know. Oh, definitely. And An adrenaline, for sure. Quincy looked at really defeated after that third goal from Lindenwood. And now we see the ball on the far side now. Craig Mateo with the long pass along the ground to Romero. Couldn't quite keep the ball, though. Luckily, Lindenwood recovered the ball. Quincy's now got a chance here. He's wide open. Oh, great defense made by Lindenwood. Yeah, nicely recovered. And a bit of a wasted effort there by Quincy. He... Uh, Kind of overshot it. That was the Englishman, Jordan Roberts there, who uh, went for a bit of a quick shot on goal. Didn't really think about it. 
And as a result, it's going for a goal kick for the Lions. But again, it was a really great opportunity to seize, and he, he made that attempt, and uh, unfortunately it didn't work out, but he still made that attempt. Yeah. If he just used a bit of vision, he would have seen that on the near side, Ethan van der Vol, number three, was wide open for the pass. May have led to a goal, and it would have been 3-2. Anyway, can't look in the past now. This is the future and present tense we're looking at right now. Will Linden would have a win? That's what we're guessing. We'll find out in less than 24 minutes when this game concludes in the Hunter Stadium. Who knows, though? Quincy could really bring it back and get that adrenaline rush um, and really just fight for that. And we're seeing Craig McTeer on the near side. He's going to switch the ball right over to Duart. Who's going to come over on the near side? Plenty of space for him. Nice solid pass along the floor to Medina. Back to Newick, who passes all the way over to Duart. Makes it a central move over to the far side via Piers. And it's now going to be Craig McTeer with the pass. Great defensive header clearance there by number 16, uh, Jake Bond. I've been calling him James Bond all night. Excuse me for that. I do love my 007 movies. Anyway, we see 24 minutes left on the clock now. We see Craig McTeer with the balls. He goes over the halfway line to Silva with the pass Lyndon back Wood to Craig looking, Lattier. sorry. Sorry, uh, Lindenwood looking kind of relaxed, um, really trying to keep the ball and kind of looking for that opportunity to really um, make that free run. Uh, we're seeing an exciting bit of play now as Furman Hughes gets the ball. He can't pick it up though, because he was passed to by a Lindenwood player. So he's gonna have to clear the ball. He does it nicely. It goes over the halfway line to Medina. Gonzalez with the ball now. He goes over to the near side. Back in the central of the uh, Quincy half. Can Aris Newkick make a kick of it? Well, he made a right hash of that. He kicked the ball and it uh, ended up going into uh, Andre Haynes' knees and it was deflected for a goal kick. Another great attempt made by Lyndon Wood for sure. And it's nine o'clock here in St. Charles, Missouri. Don't know what time it is where you guys are watching this show. You might be watching it. A couple of years from now, I have no idea. You might be watching it live like I am and being as thrilled as I am in the studio. Fantastic bit of work there by the Lindenwood Lions. We've seen a Quincy throw in here with 22 minutes left on the clock. Yeah, Quincy definitely looking for spaces to throw and kind of looking a little nervous right now. Uh, we've seen a substitution made by the Quincy side. It was number eight who came on. It's Peter Condal, a freshman, 6-1 from Ennsville, Indiana, another American for you. Oh, there's going to be a tackle on Pierre's there. And he's calling the referee, telling him that number five, Ben Oliver, who took a massive strike with the ball, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, definitely. That, went, that looked like I think he was aiming to hit. Mm -hmm. Well, can't say he was. He was he kinda went chest possibly first. aiming to hit Pierre's. He went definitely chest first into the field and the crowd didn't seem to enjoy that. Pierre's pressured there. He had to force the ball back to Fernando, uh, Fermin Hughes in goal for the Lions. And the ball's going to go out here off a Quincy defender. It was number 16, Jake Bond. Oh, a little bit of pushing and shoving there going on by Bagaric. The controversial whistles going on. A little bit of cockiness going on right now. I'll say, just a little bit of wolf whistles and uh, booing from the crowd. They don't want to see any fights tonight. This is not UFC, as much as that is an entertaining sport. Definitely. We've seen Bagaric. He's going to make the throw. Definitely makes games more interesting when there's gonna... fights, but not the right way to go for sure. Anyway, we're going to see. We don't want to see any violence here, though, Emily. This no. is uh, a sportsmanship-like game. We're going to see Bagaric with another throw now. He's made it all the way outside the penalty box of the Hawks. Linda were managing to keep possession. New kick, just managing to keep the ball there. Oh, and there's a bit of pushing and shoving and tackling going on on Barrick. 16 and five, kind of doubling up there on uh, the Linda were player. That was number five, uh, her Navy de Garrick. Yes, it was number five, her Navy de Garrick, and. Definitely, ang 
who were uh, pushing and shoving there. Definitely angering LU and makes it even more for them to win this game. Absolutely. We see under 20 minutes now for the Lindenwood Lions to keep this victory up. It's going to be Romero who's going to take the free kick. He's right on the near side. There's no wall actually been made, really, for the uh, Quincy Hawks of Illinois. We'll see how that plays out for him. Maybe he'll try and whip it in. Maybe he'll make a cross. I'd like to see him go for goal. That'd be a great effort. You can see some of the players are really agitated by each other, yeah. really trying to fight for their spot. Pushing and shoving in the penalty box there. Referee waiting for the play. I think he's waiting for a substitution here. Oh, it's Bagaric on the far side. The ball goes in nice and high. Is anyone on the end of it? No, there isn't. And it's going to go for a goal kick. Lindenwood, Lindenwood looks really um, fired up right now. Comfortable, I think, is the right word, isn't it, Emily? Definitely. Very comfortable. Now we're seeing new kick versus... Oh, nice work there by Romero, even though it came off his face. Ah, the Lindenwood players start to cheer. Find it quite funny now. The uh, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the great spot, a uh, great um, what's the word I'm looking for, Emily? Energy. Great, great energy by the crowd. That's one way of putting it. They are uh, teasing players number 16, Jake Bond, uh, for being what we call skilled by Romero for the Linwood Lions. Definitely making this game more and more interesting. Oh, uh, my blood pressure is getting high, yeah. Emily. <laughs> We're seeing a fantastic work there. We see a quick free kick quickly taken, though, by Quincy. It's going to be brought back, though, because that is not where the free kick was meant to be taken. Oh, oh here goes another fight. pushing flame. and shoving. A bit of a fight maybe going on. Oh, on the play. Pushing As and shoving going on. the crowd goes wild, literally. And the crowd is actually on their feet at this point. The referees and officials coming in. Come on, lads. This is a game of footy. <laughs> What's going on? I like how one of the... 19 <laughs> minutes left on the clock. We've seen oh. a big push over here. The re three referees oh. trying to break it up. I definitely like watching this. It reminds me of hockey. <laughs> Canadian you. Of course you'd love your <laughs> hockey and your fights. <laughs> I like how some of the uh, crowd uh, watchers are actually trying to start the wave. Oh, they're actually <laughs> going for the uh, Mexican oh. wave now. Brilliant work from the crowd. Let's hear you guys. Mexican wave? Canadians made up the wave. Anyway, we're going to see. Definitely do not know your trivia. <laughs> Anyways, back to the game. As the referee's trying <laughs> to. <laughs> I think he's trying to bring a bit of a peaceful bonding session down here. He's Definitely try so and bring the players uh, back together peacefully. 